You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. And we're back for part three with uh, a show with Matthew Arthur covering the devolution of music through the ages. In part one and part two, we covered music from the medieval times up through the 20th century, the beginning of the 20th century, really. Today, we're going to cover modern music, the evils of modern music, the issues with modern music, and also how we can battle that and try to you know find music that is that is much more appropriate and much more um, fitting to our catholic lives so matthew I, I would like you to introduce yourself a little bit again i know you've done it for part one and part two but for anyone who's just jumping into part three which i highly recommend you don't do uh, definitely go back and listen to part one and part two if you want part three to make any sense but if you're just jumping in here matthew's going to give us a little introduction of who he is um, wh- why we're doing the show, and in a brief introduction of what we're going to talk about. So, Matthew, take it away. Thanks very much, Kevin. As you mentioned earlier, listeners, please do listen to parts one and two. We understand that there are circumstances where you might not be able to. Maybe you're at someone's house and they're playing the podcast and you're not going to ask them to just go back to parts one and two when they've already heard it. Or maybe there's just something about this title that captivates you. Either way, if you do listen to this one, please do listen to the other ones because this whole series is intended to be listened to as a whole. Now, about myself, I am a husband and father of two young daughters. I've played multiple instruments. The main ones I play are piano and guitar. I've been writing my own music since I was 13 or so. It's, it's just been it's been a big part of my life. I want to call out I'm not qualified in music. I haven't done any university degree. I have completed a paid video course on Udemy, which is a platform where you pay for video courses for things that you want to learn about out of special interest or you want to learn the skills, but you don't necessarily care about the piece of paper. The teacher of this course was a PhD in music. I think he teaches at his own university or college, whatever is the appropriate institution in America. And um, I'm not qualified, so to speak, but I've done a bit of learning the materials uh, and he yeah the phd professor said that it covers the course i did covers everything that a music student would would listen uh, not listen to but would study i'm interested in doing this show because it's clear that i love music it's a big part of my life but also when i was when i was faced with the reality that we were going to have our first child i started to think about many things as i think most parents just maybe i don't know if it's just a father thing but i imagine most parents do you start to think about things just a little bit differently and one of the things i thought about was music and i reached the conclusion that when we we have to make decisions in our lives that are deliberate and that from a catholic point of view that are logical intellectual not emotional and i think that just because music is something that people generally enjoy from a subjective point of view doesn't mean that there shouldn't be a logical and intelligent approach not not saying that I'm, i'm intelligent but just using the mind to make decisions about what we listen to rather than oh i just like the way that sounds or this makes me feel good or this makes me want to move if it's kind of things like the modern music and Mm -hmm. after that kevin i think we can get into the show perfect yep let's roll with part three and uh thanks for being here with us thanks kevin episode 18 in the last two episodes we discussed really the the devolution of music starting from the ninth century and all the way up to the 20th century uh we really discussed how every step of the way from from the beauty of the Gregorian chant through the the intellectual beauty of Vivaldi and Mozart and now finally we are into the big issue of the day speaking about a little more about jazz rock and roll all of these issues and and what we should be aware of if we're going to listen to these things and especially if we'll let our children listen to them as well so Matthew thank you again for joining me Thanks, Kevin. I'm glad to be here, and um, I'm yeah. This is I think this has turned into a really good series so far. Just you know, hopefully it's informative, and I hope that this last episode is enjoyable for listeners as well. Uh, I was thinking actually before this show, I listened to a, a recent podcast with you and Eric about um, society and sanity, and when Eric was talking about how one has to respect authority, he made a joke about send all hate mail my way. Well, I think when we're going to talk about the kind of music that I think a lot of traditional Catholics still like to listen to, and we might not talk about it in a favourable light, 
I think I might be a subject of hate mail as well. So we'll see how we go. Yep. And, and I mean, I, I did a show uh, about this as well called um, Is Rock and Roll Evil? I think was the title of it. You can find that on this channel. Um, and I actually am vaguely an expert in this area. I wouldn't say I am an expert, but I was a, a wedding DJ and a DJ for whew, three or four years. I've played a lot of music. I've listened to a lot of different types of music. I've looked at a lot of lyrics for music. So I actually know this fairly well. I'm not a moral authority. Neither is Matthew. We're both just giving our opinions and saying what we believe to be right and wrong. If you have any issues or any questions about it. Yes. First, you can share your hate mail with Matthew, but then go and ask a priest about it because the priests, of course, are the ones who will guide you into actually telling you what you should or should not listen to. We're just going to tell you our experiences and what we believe to be the case with modern music. Thanks so, very Matthew, much. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, so where do we want to start? I mean, I guess, do we want to start at the beginning of the 20th century or just kind of jump into to pop and rock as we know it? I, th I think we jump into the modern stuff like pop and rock because we did discuss serialism and that kind of modern classical stuff from the 20th century. We, did, we, we talked about that a lot in the last episode. One thing I also want to mention that we're going to discuss in this episode is what, what, what to do about it. Where do, you, where do you start? And accompanying with this podcast in the show notes is going to be a listening list that I've actually put together that are some of my favorite pieces, but also some classical pieces that I think will be enjoyable to the, to the modern ear. And we'll get more into that sort of the mentality, how to get into it, how to find that music, etc. But I just wanted to assure listeners that, yes, we're going to be saying, we're going to point out things that potentially might make you question uh, the way you, you, your current musical diet and give you some ways that you can actually overcome that for the good of your soul. Yeah, and, and don't be afraid to try something new. It really is a misconception to think that classic music and Gregorian chant is something for your grandparents. And I, I know people think that. I've felt that before, too. Absolutely. I thought that's not cool. It's not hip. It's not something I would enjoy. I thought that for many years. And, and honestly, when I finally gave it a chance, I really enjoyed it more. I, I, I could tell you a little story. Last year, last summer, I was working at a golf course. Sometimes it was really hard physical labor, about 50% of the time. But the other 50, I could sit on a on a tractor and, and literally cut the grass. And so I had time to listen to audiobooks and music of all sorts. And so I had different playlists. And one of the playlists was a rock and roll playlist, which I had you know listened to when I was younger as a teenager or whatever. And it was very nostalgic. And, and I, I suppose at times I enjoyed it. But I, I really found when I was sitting on the, on the tractor, there'd be days I'd wake up in the morning at five o'clock and feel like, okay, I need a boost. I need something to lift me up. And I, I really remember one day doing that. And I turned on the rock and roll and it just didn't do anything for me. It, it, brought, it was a little bit nostalgic. It brought me memories of, of my past, but it didn't actually help my mood. It didn't actually get me into this beats, you know, okay, I, I can make it through this day. And I, I switched over. And first I listened to some choral music with, you know, Allegri and Palestrina and Vittoria. And then I listened to classical music and I felt so much better. I, I truly did. This is, a, it's a really a true story. It was not just, I, I, I wanted to be godly or saintly. I just wanted to be in a better mood. Really. That was the only thing I wanted. And it actually helped. It actually made me feel much, much better than rock or, or whatever else I was listening to, you know, pop or, or, or even, you know, Irish folk music, which I still listen to. And I think that's just an example that don't just get caught in the idea of it just being boring. Give it a shot. Give it a real chance, especially if you're feeling bored or down or whatever. Give it a shot. Absolutely, Kevin. And actually, before we get started, I might sort of draw an analogy here because I think that a lot of people don't Maybe they don't understand the importance of listening to the right music because it's just sound. It's just music. Listeners might have noticed that I've referred to how people listen to music or what they listen to as a musical diet. So think of food, right? So if you're listening – sorry, if you're eating rubbish food, so I'm thinking like sugary food, I'm thinking junk food like fast food, right, if that's – all, if that's all your diet is, you're going to be really unhealthy. And 
you know, and that sort of thing of sugar, like, you know, sugar might give you a kick sometimes, but then you sort of come crashing down pretty quickly. And maybe if you're really hooked on sugar, it doesn't really start to do much for you anyway. You're just now having it because you're addicted and it doesn't even give you any sort of real satisfaction. I guess that might be what you experienced, Kevin, about that kind of music. Like it might have given you a boost at one point, but then it gets to the point as well where it doesn't really fulfill that anymore. And I want to also let listeners know that that's that if, if you haven't reached that point yet, that doesn't mean it's time to change your musical diet. But I just think it's really important to understand that what you consume affects you. We see this with food. We see this with ideas. With If you watch movies that are bad, you're going to have bad ideas. If you watch movies that are good, you're going to have good ideas. If you're going to read books that have good themes, it's going to affect you well. If you read books that have bad themes, it's going to affect you very badly. Music is just like that, I would say. It's something that, as a listener, you are consuming and you want to take control of what you decide to let your ears take in. Yeah, and that's exactly right. And I think, as you say, if you eat candy and if you eat too much of the sugar, you get you feel sick. And it's really the same, I think, emotionally and mentally, that if you consume garbage all the time and if you commit sin especially – you get sick. You get mentally sick. I, I really, truly think that's a big issue in society. People always wonder, why do we have so many cases of, of mental disorders? Why are people depressed? And I, I think, OK, some of it, sure, maybe some physical chemical imbalance or something. I'm not a doctor. I'm not sure. I'm not a psychologist. But I think that a lot of it is people are literally hurting because they've hurt their conscience. They, they, they've 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 taken in so much bad material if it's movies or 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 music or or books or or whatever it is or or news media social media it actually makes you ill and 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 i think that we have to remember that that if we are truly unhappy ask yourself why why am i unhappy is it because i don't have a great car is it because i don't have money no it, that's not it because look at people who have money in a car they're almost never happy either it's because because they sin. It's because they're away from God. Our only true way to happiness is towards God and with God. And of course, I am no saint. So don't get me wrong. I'm plenty unhappy all the time because I do want a car and I do want money. But but we have to tell ourselves, hey, look, God gives us very easy rules to be happy. We, we should do our best to follow that. Yeah, absolutely. Spot on. And I think let's get started into now talking about jo- jazz, rock and roll, modern pop, etc. So this kind of music started to rise as Vatican II was on its way to coming and after it came, which is, I think, something quite important to note. And anyone who knows a little bit about history with that, era, with that area knows that the overall standard of art, I guess, that stuff that people would consume really started to deteriorate because as Vatican II was coming and when it came, the church wasn't doing as well of a job of regulating things or you know having these standards like the legion of decency etc like i i've heard I, uh, this is just what i've heard but i've heard that a lot of movie producers and directors took a lot of bad things out of their movies or they made they made decisions to not put immorality in movies because they knew that the legion of decency would condemn it and therefore they would lose a massive customer base with the catholics which basically means that they were corrupt as they were just making a business decision um and i think that a lot of that corruption comes into music as well but let's talk about the music in and of itself so as we touched on a little bit in the last episode a lot of this modern music is focused around the beat the rhythm that kick drum that boom boom even ballads have a boom something that just didn't happen in traditional traditional music traditional classical music um and i we touched on earlier as well that because you know this is rhythm centric music and i would argue that it is speaking to one's passions and it's just in and of itself just listening to the music um, we haven't even touched on the lyrics yet, which is just a massive factor, but just the music in and of itself, I would say, is going to make it harder for one who listens to this music, especially if it's their main diet or part of their diet or the only part of their diet. I think it's going to make it harder for one to control their passions. What would you say, Kevin? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is built to be emotional, as you say. I mean, I mean, I can tell you as an example – as a DJ, there is a certain beat that 
I, is the same beat as your heartbeat. I think it is. I, I think it's 120 beats per minute. Maybe you can tell me that as well. I, maybe you've done this too, but I know there's a certain rhythm. There's a certain beat that DJs actually try to build their music off of it. And it's called house, a uh, house rhythm or something like that. I, I forget the exact term, but there, there is actually a, a scientifically proven way to get people dancing. And this is with modern music. And so you hear a lot of these, say, say Avicii or all these different, you know, artists who create this, this modern kind of techno music. They mostly have the exact same pace, the exact same beat. And then they build their music around it because it is actually absolutely known to, to cause your heart to, to go faster and to cause you to want to dance. It's actually, that's how it's actually built. And so it's, it's meant to physically change you it actually physically changes you and i think that is a really scary thought and i think that on that as well if musicians are designing composing producing music for the purpose of getting people to dance then we've established that producers of music are producing music to achieve a certain aim with people we can't say no more that Music, it's just random sounds. It just sounds good. It's all random. No, music has a purpose, and modern music doesn't have a good purpose. A lot of modern music has impure lyrics, explicit or even just implicit. Like, if you're looking at lyrics, I would say, for a modern song, if there's anything that could be construed as being impure, it should be construed that way because there should be no benefit of the doubt given to something that's that's just the default it's just it's just crazy and the these impure lyrics would you know the fact that they have these impure lyrics is congruent with the theory i would say that it's centered around one's passions and because impurity is the result of a lack of control over one's passions it's just something really important to keep in mind yeah and, and again it should make you wonder is this something i want to be putting into my mind do i want this to be part of my day i mean and, and if it is it's okay there, there are i think we're not just condemning rock and roll or, or pop even i mean first of all I, I would say absolutely if you are singing along to songs definitely be careful what lyrics you i mean there are some things i think are absolutely solid we can say hey look some songs are bad some groups are bad just absolutely no question easy some of them sold their souls to the devil and admitted it so some some things are really no, not a problem. I mean, rap, I think it's is just bad. I mean, heavy rock is bad. Metal is bad. I just look at the, the names of the groups and stuff. They're, they're against God. They're, they're for the devil. Easy. But I mean, especially even with the, the pop songs and stuff, just, just really pay attention to what they're singing and especially what you're singing with. And even if it's not directly immoral, as we mentioned with the, with the Disney songs, just just really try to think, okay, what am I singing? When you're singing Palestrina, for instance, you're singing almost always a prayer. It is is a prayer taken from the Psalms or from the Mass or, or from any other sort of, of holy subject. And if you're singing that, you're you're actually singing a prayer. Now compare that to singing with, I don't know, Britney Spears. And I, I tell you, 99% of the time you're singing, you're actually singing along to something immoral. And of course that's not something we should want. Absolutely. And the fact that it has immoral lyrics should kind of give us a bit of, should make us cautious to, even towards the music that they designed to push those lyrics. The music is designed to push a message. And if your message is impure, how can we make the music sound impure as well? So we also see other passions coming out in this modern breed of music such as anger extreme examples would be metal music we also have infatuation and extreme sadness i'm thinking soppy loves love songs with emotion driven lyrics like oh it's i mean I, I don't even listen to the music but some of the stuff is just i mean it's hilarious but it's also sad at the same time and the this concept and you know we're, t we're talking about the music here, but it's always good to look at things in a bigger picture. The concept of having passionately and emotionally driven music, I would say, is in line with modern subjective philosophy, which can be translated to sayings such as, quote unquote, listen to your heart or, quote unquote, do what feels right, rather than using one's intellect to make intelligent decisions, rather than adopting objective philosophy which the church obviously promotes subjective philosophy being condemned just another nail in the coffin i would say for modern music 
Oh, totally. And, and I think on another note, just look at the devolution of not society, even not just music, but look at the, the devolution of of the people attending these things. So back back 100 years ago, you're attending a concert. You were dressed very nicely. You sat in a seat. You 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 spoke only when the music was over. There, there was very good decorum. You had rules. You had regulations. But as, as it moved on, okay, you moved into, say, the 1930s and 40s, okay? Then you started to dance. But the women were still generally dressed appropriately. The men also, too. They wore, you know, coats and, and, and you know, vests or whatever. So they were still decently dressed. But it started to get people more out on the dance floor. They were going to, to musical shows to move rather than to sit you know, quietly. And then, as, of course, as you progress into the 1960s, just look at the Beatles. The Beatles are the exact example. The Beatles came into popularity in 1962, of course, right during the time of the Vatican Council, as you mentioned. And look at the people attending these concerts. This is absolutely insane. If you go and watch the old videos of the Beatles, the people are going there, especially the women, and absolutely losing their minds. I mean, absolutely losing their senses and acting like insane people. I mean, like nuts. They, they go absolutely crazy. And you see, again, this is actually the devolution of of behavior while listening to music. So we, this is a really logical thing. Just look how people act when they listen to this music and tell me, are the fruits good? Is it a tree that bears good fruit? And if it's not, is it something we should be involved with? Absolutely. And it's kind of like, you know, if someone's trying to be healthy, I'm going to go back to that food analogy, the diet. If you see that someone who is smashing down the sugar, the alcohol, the junk food, um, and you start to see that they get obese, you're not going to want that. Um, it's just that nowadays, though, um, look, you know, being fat, obese, unattractive, etc., is still looked at in society as uh, undesirable. So people will not want to do that. Maybe not necessarily. Um, people will not people will want to mortify themselves and deny themselves certain foods not necessarily because they're trying to you know strengthen my willpower uh, i mean some people might but as a general rule you know or to um you know be mortify myself for god it's because of human respect and it's really important that we understand that because modern music even in some traditional catholic circles is still sort of considered okay and it's acceptable we now don't the challenge we have is we have to now make a decision that is really counter counter revolutionary no no it's just counter revolutionary sorry just counter revolutionary where and it's not about human respect now so if you if if a lot of your good works have been motivated by human respect respect not even 100 percent, but a lot of it you know, you, you're going to have to sort of step up a little bit because when you start looking into what we have to present and if you start to really understand that things need to be changed, it's the motive has to be a bit higher. So just something I thought I'd mention there as well. Yeah, it's exactly right. I mean, it's, it's like contrition, right? You have perfect contrition and imperfect contrition. Imperfect is, is when you're just afraid of going to hell and perfect is when you do it for the love of God. And that's, as you say, it's, it's equal to what, to what you're talking about, that it's the perfect way of doing it is if you do the right thing because you love God and, and want to make God happy. The imperfect way is, okay, you're still doing the right thing, but you're doing it because the other people around you are doing it. So it, it, it's still good, but it's obviously not even close to being as good as it should be. Because again, anyone listening to the show, it goes without saying that we all want to be saints. That, that's the only reason why we're here. It's not easy. I'm not anywhere close, but that's the whole purpose. And so I think we, we have to approach things that way. And I can speak for myself. Again, I was a wedding DJ. I've played plenty of songs. I was actually directly involved with playing bad music. Now, I do have to say most of the weddings I went to, I did everything I could to play clean versions of the songs they requested. I actually edited them or I had I found them edited. But even then, you know, I it's still something that I was actually directly involved in playing bad music. And that's something that I feel terrible about now. I think that's it's an absolutely unfortunate thing. And there are many of these songs that, again, people don't even know to be really, really bad. And so if that's the case, I think it's just safer to just stay away from it in general. It, it's like it's like if you're back to food, you know, if, if you know for sure, absolutely for certain that some candy you're going to eat is poisonous, you're pot, it's, it's you're sure of it, but you're not sure which ones. 
I mean, do you just kind of selectively pick the candy or do you just give it up in general? I mean, yeah, it, I think that's maybe that's how we have to look at it. Stop being so weak. It's hard to hear. And I know it, it sounds harsh that we're saying just give up rock and roll. Yeah. OK. You know, again, we're not moral authorities. You don't have to do what we say. But but if our goal is heaven. Yeah, find find another way. And I, I think that's what we want to talk about, too, again, is is what else can we listen to? What What else is there? And there are plenty of things. There's plenty of decent music that you can find. I mean. Maybe you just need to find songs that you really like, check out the lyrics, and you know, there you go. That's the first step, I suppose. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, we always say, um, oh, Kevin says it more than I do, that, you know, we're not we're not theologians here and we're also not saying that what we say is gospel. We're we're providing a view and we are providing a view that we believe to be an educated view. And we're also happy, happy to be challenged on it. However, one thing I would challenge listeners to do is if you do listen to what we are saying and you are listening to your modern music and you go, no, Kevin and Matt, you're just, you're over, you're over the top. You're, 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 you're being, you're, you're, you're too extreme here. Kevin always says, speak to a priest. I can almost assure you that any trusted priest would not encourage or approve of listening to modern music. So, Give it a crack if you're not listening or if you're skeptical of what we have to say. Now, Kevin, I don't think we need to talk about or we don't need to play any excerpts of modern pop music, maybe to the disappointment of some listeners, but I think there's enough around that we don't need to play any excerpts. Right. Well, and and if anyone wants any real details about rock and roll and the evils of some songs and artists especially, go and listen to my other um, episode on this channel called uh, Is Rock and Roll Evil? Because it does have some extremely specific and even explicit material that shows that there's some real garbage out there. I mean, real, truly, truly terrible stuff. And and it's just bla- it's blaring out there. And I, we have to secure ourselves against it. And sometimes, sure, you go into a grocery store and you're going to hear Lady Gaga. What can you do? There, there's just try to try to not listen to it, you know, try to, you know, hum it out or whatever, because this is getting a little, a little deep, a little conspiratorial, a little down a rabbit hole. But I, I think it's absolutely true that I think there are actual curses written into these songs and these TV shows and stuff. I think they actually, the Satanists, you know, witches. I think they actually put curses on these things, and I think there is an actual spiritual web of evil that is around us all the time in media. And I think that back in the day, it wasn't so bad. And back in the day, it was fought directly spiritually by monks and nuns who were, who were, all they did all day was pray. They prayed and worked and they sang. And I think that was an actual battle. They were actually at battle, literally at battle with the, the forces of evil. And nowadays we just don't have as many monks and nuns. And so you see society, I think, is kind of winning that battle and, and, and the evil is winning that battle. And these curses that are all around us are are infecting us and in making us sin and giving us temptations or whatever it is. And we have to be part of the battle to fight that because we don't have the monasteries. We don't have the St. Benedict. So we have to become that. And that should be encouraging. That shouldn't be something that we sit and mope and, and cry and, oh, I can't listen to my favorite song. What what are you doing here? Do you want to go to heaven? Do you do you want to help others go to heaven, or do you want to enjoy your music? It, it's that simple. Sounds harsh, but just man up or or woman up and and, and do it. But yeah, I mean, I'm smiling so much as you say that, Kevin. It's just it's so true, and I, I think a direct approach is sometimes needs to be had. Um, you know, and yeah, it's a battle here, and we're in control of the battle with. God's grace, of course, and obviously it goes without saying when we say making decisions or um, executing decisions. Pray, obviously. Uh, there's just there are some things that are you know just just so obvious that you should be doing as well. But on the practical point, you know, let let's let's win this battle, and we can win our own little battles. You know, uh, we can win the war if we save our soul, and we should be trying to save our soul in every possible way. We're not. Uh, we're all weak. We all have faults, but there are things that we can make deliberate decisions to improve, um, as opposed to things like falling into I don't know bouts of sadness or anger. You know that might come across us, but we can make a decision here. Like listeners, you can make a decision. Listen to what we have to say and do your own research. Uh, speak to priests, and 
do something about it that's going to save your soul. So what I want to do next is I want to talk about what I personally have found with I've changed my diet and I, I listen to a lot of classical music. I listen to Gregorian chant and some of that music as well. To be fully honest, I'm a bit of a classical music junkie. So that's that's where I'm at at the moment. And I wanted to talk about what I've found, a bit about my experience um, and I think I think every person who starts to brag about themselves, quote unquote, likes to do this disclaimer. Um, and I'm going to do it anyway, just to say that this isn't about me saying, "Oh, look at me, what have I done?" It's not about that at all. I actually want to talk about some of the benefits I have found um, by listening to to classical music and changing this diet because it's just so much better. So one thing I would like to mention is I actually find most modern music appealing on multiple levels, even on the enjoyment level now. There's going to be the odd song you might hear if you're out and about and you might go, oh, this is a kind of a catchy tune. And you might enjoy it to a degree, but overall, like I listen to a lot of modern music that might come on uh, when I'm out in the shops or whatever. And I can't stand it. I can't wait to be out of there. One thing to, to, to mention as well, I would argue that a lot of modern music, in fact, probably most modern music, is the intellectual equivalent of reading a children's book, whereas good classical music is like reading a novel written for adults. Once you know how to read properly, that novel is so much more enjoyable and interesting than that kid's book. Yeah, that, that, that's perfectly said i mean i think if you just again listen to the lyrics some of these songs are just and i don't listen to them either you hear them in the store and i i am exactly the same that they're, they're so poorly done there's no talent there's no there's nothing to recommend it there, there's really not except it's cool it's it's in it's hip and it has this beat that gets you energized that that's it there, there's nothing else recommending it now Sure, there are exactly like you said. There are some that are they're very good. I I still have some that I really enjoy. If I ever hear it, I, I absolutely love them. I sing along to them. But you know, again, I I think in general it's better to just quit it as a whole. But but look at the the influence you might have on someone who gets in your car. You know, you're driving a friend from from school or whatever, someone who's not Catholic, and you're driving in your car, and you turn on the radio to something hot, you know, pop or rock or whatever. You that's going to have zero positive influence on your friend that's for sure right for sure there's no positive now negative i don't know could be one way or the other now what if you turn on mozart or, or palestrina now you could say there's a negative in that they may think you're a little old-fashioned they may think you're a little weird but there's also the possibility that you make them think you give that them that kernel of, of or that little grain that they can plant you plant in them and they can say hey maybe Maybe there is another thing I can listen to. And that's how we have to think. We have to be the light of the world trying to lead other people to truth. And if you're turning on rock and roll, yeah, it's maybe not actually evil, but it's not good. T try to do something good. And I think that's the way we can actually affect the world that we're in. Little tiny things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And it just the concept of of the scenario you mentioned if you're imagine you're a traditional catholic and there is someone you are trying to influence of course we have to focus on our souls first that should be the main focus but there are fruits that, that come with how we try to do that and the people who actually like the saints who do convert a lot of people became a uh, converted people because they focused on themselves to be saints and it's just not inspiring because you're here saying I'm a traditional Catholic, I'm against the world and for God, and then you chuck on some music that's really just worldly as heck. So it's just a, you're actually living a bit of a contradiction, and I think, I think most, if not all, traditional Catholics know this, even just slightly, but it's really important that listening to modern music is contradicting what you believe if you're a traditional Catholic. But let's go back on to um, even some more benefits that I found by changing my musical diet to classical and things like classical. I will also, by the way, listen to things like Celtic music, like folky sort of music. It's not as um, it's it's not as intellectually stimulating, if you will, or as good for the intellect as classical. But my goodness, it is worlds better than modern music, and it just there's something about it that 
clearly sounds more right than modern music these days. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, I, I love Celtic music and I love, I love even some, some bluegrass. If it's with some, it, it, that's a little iffy too. You got to be a little careful because it could get, get a little funky, but, but some bluegrass I think is really entertaining. Again, it's not, it's not uplifting. It's not bringing your soul to God, but it, I think it's okay. Especially if it doesn't have lyrics, you can look at some old country Western songs. I really enjoy like folk songs, like Marty Robbins and stuff. These old ballads that actually told a story and told an interesting story. Yeah. Sometimes they're love stories, but usually they're, they're not immoral because they were sung at a time where you just weren't allowed to sing something that immoral. So absolutely, there there are tons of different ways that you can listen to things, and and even if you listen if you listen to pop or rock, just just do a little research and make sure you're not listening to ones that are really really bad. That, that that's I think my main point that that be really careful because you could be singing along to a song that's that's actually absolutely terrible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and I I, I probably come across a sort of going modern music, pop music, mortal sin, which isn't the case here, but we shouldn't be thinking let's just avoid mortal sins in fact you know we should be trying to avoid venial sins and we should be trying to do that in every deliberate way that we possibly can and of course everyone has different strengths and weaknesses and for tailored advice you need to speak to a spiritual director but this is something really to consider heavily. But just as well, what I've found with listening to classical music, and I have to stipulate here, I actually dislike a lot of classical music out there. Um, there's so much music out there that you can be picky, which is something I love with classical music. You can be so picky. There are some pieces that will come on and I'm like, nah, there's no way I'm going to listen to this. I might find it boring. Maybe I'll listen to it on Lent, but that's about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, exactly. But the music through the ages, this classical style music, and when I say classical, I'm not just referring to the classical era. I'm actually referring to things like Baroque as well. You could technically say Romantic era also, but if you, know, if you wanted to refer to that as classical, I don't listen to it much. I wouldn't say there's anything overly wrong about it, even though we – analyzed it quite heavily in one of the previous shows but just referring to that overall era it consists those the music there consists of many different forms and techniques and i find it much more creative and interesting than a lot of modern music there's so much going on there's so much more that's interesting it's it's like again back to that that novel analogy if you're if all you've ever read is ch are children's books a really cool novel like I don't know, what's one that people like a lot? Lord of the Rings. You're not going to like Lord of the Rings, but anyone who can read that well is going to know that Lord of the Rings is so much better than some kid's book. Yeah, exactly. And just don't be afraid of the depth. And, and I, another suggestion I'd have is go and see a concert live. And you can often see these free. I think at least it used to be the case in the US that you have these open air concerts or you can get really cheap tickets because I think, primarily because people don't don't want to spend too much money on it because it's not popular. There's some in crowd. But anyway, you'll have a very different experience if you watch it live. And I think it will actually most likely give you a better feeling of, of I don't know, how it can in, impact you. Now, now, maybe not. You may be bored to tears. You, you may fall asleep. That that It has that effect. And like you say, there are tons of different types in, in different composers. And, and I, I, I'm exactly the same. When I turn on the classical channel, I probably don't like about 70% of it. It's just like, for me, it's just like, bleh. but I have 30% that I love. And then I, I can put that into a playlist and boom, there you go. And you have, you still have, you know, probably a hundred hours of music you can listen to. Same as rock. Anyone listening to rock, there are plenty of songs you don't like, and there are plenty of songs you do. So just find the ones you like and listen to them. You know, and that's fine. And keep, yeah. keep trying, trying to find something new. There, there's yeah. so much out there, as you say. Absolutely right. Absolutely. Someone might just go, oh, I'm going to look up a classical playlist on YouTube. Hey, I didn't like that first song. Classical music's not for me. You know, give it a shot. But what I'm going to get into now, and this is probably what I would say is the biggest benefit of getting away from modern music and listening to things like classical classical is my main music that i listen to but celtic as well and and i'll listen to i mean even church organ music i'm trying to get into a bit more that's a bit i wouldn't recommend that for someone who's trying to get out of the modern music scene it is not something that 
that is usually enjoyable one especially the recordings the the way it's the orca can sound a little harsh at times it's really cool but it's not the kind of thing i would recommend getting into if you're just trying to get out of modern music but classical music and that kind of stuff i really enjoy um these things that i have found these benefits uh i don't have to worry about whether i'm listening to something that may be a sin to listen to or even because of considerations such as i don't have to ask myself when i'm listening to a song um, does the music I'm listening to contain any immoral lyrics? One thing to note here as well, I don't like operas at all, really. Opera c- usually contain immoral stories as plots, pagan themes. People are usually allowed to listen to opera because the lyrics are actually quite irrelevant and the listeners only care about the music. And if you actually look at the lyrics of opera, it's actually really mild like what i've i've only done a little bit of looking into it and it's generally like the, a piece in and of itself might have some things that are mildly immoral but they don't they really not explicit enough to put images in your mind i would always say speak to a priest if you really want to be certain but that's just something i should call out here because there is the tendency to go overboard and we don't want to go overboard virtue is in the middle we just want to do what's in the middle and not do something that's actually on the side of being lax thinking it's actually virtue in the middle so just got to find that balance and you can always speak to a priest now another consideration is i don't need to think about things like is the rhythmic style of the music i'm listening to making me more controlled by my passions rather than help me gain control of my passions and the last thing i've got here as well is that i don't have to worry about thinking is the emotional effect from this music rendering me more mentally incapacitated rather than being in more control of my emotions i'm making a distinction of emotions and passions there they're two separate things that kind of go similar but this modern music can affect you emotionally which isn't really good it can especially like um you know if you have a certain duty i mean i mean if, what if you're a dad and you have to you have to be somewhat emotionally stable for your family and if you're listening to this music that makes you go the opposite that's something that you've really got to think about yeah, no, that's that's absolutely right. And and just think about it even from a worldly perspective. If you if you I don't know who's a good example, even Bill Gates who I think is uh, the slime of the earth, but a really smart guy, right? Do you think that Bill Gates when he's trying to code or whatever he's doing, running Microsoft, I kind of doubt he's listening to like hard rock or metal. I just doubt it. I I think you, you, your brain doesn't work as well. You're not as as focused. I mean, you just cannot actually think because it's there's too much going on. It's too, taking up too much space in your brain for you to actually think properly. So that's that's a totally non spiritual side of it too. That that you actually think better with classical music or or with silence, obviously. But but rock and roll. Don't, don't sit at home trying to do your your homework or whatever. Listening to rock or rap or 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 even jazz or anything. I think you you if you want something to help you, then then go ahead and listen to yeah Mozart or or whatever. And I've I've got some, you know, like soundtracks that I absolutely love. That they're much more of their violin based. Maybe they're a little emotional. They're they're not quite your, yeah, more perfect forms of of the art. But they are very peaceful and very good for, yeah, thought. And I think that's that's another way you can you can kind of get around it. There there are many very beautiful soundtracks um, that. Yeah, they're not as good as, as the true classics, but but still better than rock. Spot on. And if we go back to the analogy with food. I'm getting I'm, hungry, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've had, <laughs> I've had all my meals for Lent. Oh, so dude, I, 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 Yeah, and it's Friday, so I'm surviving on no meat. But uh, nice. first world problems, of course. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if we go back to that analogy, I would look at modern pop music as like the most sugary, disgustingly unhealthy food you could get at either at a restaurant, maybe not even at a restaurant, but in in the grocery store, I would look at things like Gregorian chant and that spiritual music as the really healthy stuff. You know, the stuff that probably if you're used to sugar is going to taste disgusting, your veggies and all that. But if you have a more balanced diet, you're actually probably going to enjoy with some other things. So I would say things like classical music might be more like not your super healthy veggies or maybe not your herbs and all that really healthy stuff, but stuff that's healthy, maybe like good bit of meat and, you know, that's that kind of stuff. And then if we're getting to things like um, 
maybe more emotional classical or folk or Celtic. Maybe we're looking at things that are kind of like a food. Arguably, it's kind of like a, ma- a mix between some carbs with sugar, but with some good stuff overall. So it's not totally healthy, but you're happy to take that chance because you know that the the negatives it have are actually still quite good overall. But you've got to recognize that this modern pop music isn't that you know isn't that meal that's kind of balanced with a bit of sugar here and there like that sugary sauce it's just like having really disgustingly fake food and and even adding on to that and i i really mean this it is also that sugary grossness but some of it is actually poison and i I mean that some of it is actually poison it will actually poison you i I can't stress that enough i've looked into this people don't don't look into it. Look, tr- trust me. Go check out my rock and roll episode. I mean, there is some absolutely disturbing, disgusting, horrific stuff in rock. You got to trust me on that. So not all of it, but some of it. And if that's the case, ugh, be careful, please. I, I think if you've listened listened to the show, you've seen that there are plenty of alternatives, and and that music should be a way to to raise our minds to God, or at least to raise our minds. And if it's not, let, let's let's question it like anything else we do. We, we, you know, you don't watch a movie with filth in it, or you shouldn't. And if that's the case, then don't don't watch music with filth in it. I think that in the end, that's that's kind of the message we want to get across that that society and, and everything has devolved, but we don't have to devolve with it. That that's the point. Don't take this as a negative. Don't take this as as us telling you what not to do. Taking it what you can do. What can you do to be better? What can we do? I, I gave it up too. I liked it, rock and roll, like I said, for many years. So it's not something that I'm just, you know, trying to say. I'm really trying to act it out too, and it's hard. And but but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. And, and we have to be the soldiers of Christ and to to fight that battle. And part of that battle is saying enough to this garbage music and, and enough to the music that at least could be garbage. So so I, I think we both could stress that give it a shot at least. Do your best. Tr- try to get out of this because. In the end, it, it's worth it. it. It's like a good diet. You, you'll be happier in the end. You just don't know it now. Absolutely. And I think, Kevin, now's a good time to get into some practical tips. What are we going to do about it? So, you know, you, listeners, you know that something is just not quite right with the modern music that's being produced today. You can actually see how we got here as well. We've taken you through that journey through a high-level overview and you now want to change your musical diet. I hope if you are listening to modern music, you are, or at least you're considering changing it. But where do you start? So let's get into some practical tips. As I mentioned in an earlier show, please do not type modern classical into Google or whatever you are using. This is probably going to bring up some expressionism, serialism, ugly music, and you're going to go, this is disgusting. Give me back my rock and roll. It's just oh, rock. I don't even know if people, a lot of people listen to rock and roll, but yeah, it's it's not it's not the way to go. So that could be a rookie mistake. Beware of that. One thing you can do is you can look on Wikipedia and look at a list of composers by era. It's really cool because you can just click on Romantic era if you want to or Baroque era. You're going to get a huge list. Like There's no shortage of music in the classical music scene. And maybe just type in a random person's name into YouTube. What's probably going to happen is their most famous piece of music is going to be the top hit. Have a listen. It might surprise you that you actually go, this isn't bad. Um, Now, You can also listen to things like folk and Celtic music. It's not as intellectually focused as things like classical. can affect emotions a bit more, but it's really so much better than the modern pop and rock out there. Now, I'm going to, like I said, there's going to be a a list in the show notes of music that I would recommend. It's a classical playlist. Maybe just some things to have a listen through and pick and choose what you might like um it's spotify the main reason i've used spotify links is because i know that this is the version that this is the performance that i think is really good whereas sometimes it's a little bit hard i found a bit hard to find the exact version on youtube so i didn't want to just put names out there because you might hear a version that's actually not that great so i hope that that's useful as well yeah no no perfect i think that yeah, I mean, practically go about it in in the best way that you can. Do your best, and I, I I think in the end it's fairly simple. But 
it's not as simple for everyone else. So we have tips for you. We have songs that you can look into and, and don't take someone else's playlist. Exactly. As, as Matthew said, don't just take his playlist as being great. Maybe you don't like his stuff or, or Palestrina, which I love. Go, go and just dip into it. Try a different one. If you like something, then save it and try another one from from that composer. And I mean, I think it's it's that simple, but it is important. Music is important and it is something that we should take very seriously. And I I very much appreciate having had Matthew on for these three these three episodes, which I hope has shown our listeners a little bit about the the, the history of the devolution of music and, and where it's come from, from the ninth century until now. There are definitely some highlights and some some low points of the musical timeline. Um, but if you learned anything, then just learn that music is important and you should really care about how you ingest it. And I think that maybe we've done a little bit to help you in doing the best you can in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kevin. And I'll just quickly finish off with just some more, just another tip I would give is that if you are someone who is listening to pop and rock music and you're now trying to make that change, which is fantastic, you will need to set the expectation with yourself that the good music you're going to listen to is not going to have the exact same appeal that you've that has appealed you to the music you are currently listening to but it's going to have a better appeal a higher appeal so you just have to hone in on that and it like kevin said it can be a little bit hard to detox and change that but it's going to be totally worth it so just set the expectation with yourself that it's going to be a little bit different possibly a little bit hard but there are some practical tips to make it easier and more enjoyable than it you know making it more um, easier than enjoyable than it could be if you didn't have these tips and one thing i'd like to end with is you know at the end of the day modern music is the music of the enemy and music is always a cultural statement and music of the enemy is a very powerful cultural statement i would say that catholics who listen to modern pop music are either worldly or become worldly and our lord said you are of this world i am not of this world we don't want those words to apply to us. Yep, exactly. Perfectly said. And well, Matthew, it's been fun. It's it's been a, it's been a good time talking about music. I hope to have you on again sometime to talk about I don't know what something else we can <laughs> dive into dive into more about Mozart or or who knows. I'm sure there's plenty of topics that we could come up with. I, I really enjoyed it. And anyone listening to this, you can reach out to either of us. If you have questions, concerns, comments, hate mail, go ahead and send it to either of us. I'll attach our emails in the show notes. As Matthew as well said, he will attach, we will attach the the different songs um, in his playlist as well as recommendations we have for people who are looking to make a change. So Matthew, thank you so much for coming on for all three episodes. And yeah, um, until next time, God bless. God bless. Thanks very much, Kevin. It's been great. We hope that you found this mini-series on the devolution of music beneficial and helpful. As an extra feature, to conclude this mini-series, we are going to play all the musical excerpts that were used in parts 1 and 2 to illustrate how music has devolved throughout the ages. Now we start with musical excerpts from the medieval era. And now on to musical excerpts from the Renaissance era.
And now to musical excerpts from the Baroque era. And on to musical excerpts from the classical era. And now we move on to musical excerpts from the Romantic era.
And finally, we play one musical excerpt from the modernist era. You've been listening to the Catholic Family Podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and family. You can support the production on Patreon and PayPal, and you can reach Kevin at kevin89davis at gmail.com. Ad maiorem de gloriam. All for the greater glory of God.